Hello friends and family and welcome to the Crippling Anxiety Fireside Chat. I wanted to speak today about the idea of um, influence, external influence. And um, I'll try to treat the topic a little delicately, um, but I'll approach it by telling a story. <laughs> This story is about when I was in university and I was renting an apartment with a friend. Um, my friend really liked uh, hip hop and he paid an extraordinary amount of money to get uh, BET, Black Entertainment Television. Um, it was the most difficult channel to get on television uh, you had to pay for all the tiers. So I think our TV bill was something like $130 a month. And uh, it meant that to recoup his losses on this investment, he had BET playing all the time. Uh, from the time we woke up to the time we went to sleep, the television was showing BET. Um, it made me well versed in the world of hip hop where I may not have been otherwise. Um, but I found a really strange effect that I wasn't even really cognizant of at the time, but in hindsight, I became quite cognizant of, which was that uh, this time period was the early 2000s and uh, hip hop, R&B and rap music videos um, often had uh, a, a great deal of cars in them and um, cars that were styled in a particular way. So huge rims, unreasonably large rims, and a lot of chrome and hydraulics. And as a young university student who couldn't possibly afford any of these things and definitely should not have put any of these things on my uh, broken down Toyota Corolla, broken down uh, due to my own uh, mistreatment of that poor car. It was a very good car. Um, I, I wound up craving these things that under no other circumstances would I crave. I mean, there were no cars with hydraulics in Regina, Saskatchewan, where I was going to university. It was only because I was exposed to this TV channel that I was seeing these images and seeing um, the, the ideals that were meant to be portrayed by these music videos. And it was funny in hindsight to realize just how much seeing that at home all day, whenever I was home, influenced my perspective. And I think that um, it is often the case that our external influences are much, much less obvious than this. So to be exposed to hydraulics and chrome wheels day after day and then find that you're craving those things or interested in those things is probably unsurprising actually, although it was a bit surprising to me at that age. Um, but it is harder to see the micro influences that affect our day. The people we speak to in our family, acquaintances, close friends, coworkers, the media we consume, whether that's online or on paper or through a podcast or through the TV. Um, they are all intertwined and they're all influencing one another and they're also influencing us. It's sort of this super organism of information and uh, cross-pollinating influence that we're involved in. And we are also producing the influence, right? I'm influencing you right now because you're watching this video, presuming you're not getting bored of it and turning it off. And meditation is uh, an opportunity to turn all of that off. It's not even 
the same kind of opportunity as a book about the subject. So you can read a book that says, oh yes, spend less time on social media and spend less time watching TV and spend less time reading the newspaper. Even spend less time talking to people. Spend more time in silence. But just silence on its own isn't really silence as you've no doubt seen from in meditation. As soon as you sit down to meditate, your memories of all of this stuff start pouring over you and you can't get away from them. And it's interesting that there is a way to sort of work in the other direction. And this is not the goal of meditation. This is not the aim to cleanse yourself of external influences to um, I've heard the description of getting to inbox zero for your mind. I, this idea is, um, I would go out of my way to describe it as categorically incorrect, but the imagery is perhaps useful to think about meditation as helping you move toward those states of um, freedom from external influence. And um, I think that it actually takes less meditation than you would think to reach the point where you are no longer inundated with thoughts of Twitter and TV and what's in the news and what is the government doing and um, what did my coworkers say. But um, it, it takes sincere effort. And so I would encourage you to apply that effort and see uh, it doesn't matter that you progress all the way along um, the spectrum and you all, you will always come back, right? And Twitter will still be there when you come out of a meditation course. But um, you will uh, get to a point where you can measure how far across the spectrum you've really traveled and you will note that it is some distance. And it would encourage you to meditate at least until you have this moment of clarity where you can say, oh, this thing isn't coming up anymore. That's interesting. Um, and see exactly how that process has occurred for yourself um, because it's interesting and informative. Um, all the same, I would encourage you to spend a little less time online, a little less time in front of the TV, and a little less time on text chats. Those are um, my addiction these days. That, that and coffee. And they go hand in hand. <laughs> I hope you're all taking care of yourselves. I will talk to you again tomorrow. Goodbye.